how a grocery store worker went from making $1.25 an hour to starting Costco. Costco is one of the largest retailers in the world and is thought to be valued at $137 billion. Members reportedly find better bargains at Costco than on Amazon 80% of the time. Building an empire that grew to have 55 million members in 11 countries was not easy. It all began with a business lawyer turned retail genius and a student, a grocery bagger making $1.25 an hour. If not for a plan being forced to make an emergency landing after being struck by lightning, their plan would have collapsed. Let's get into it. But first, a reminder to subscribe if you enjoy remarkable true stories like this. Early Life the story begins in New York, where Saul Price was born in 1916 to a Jewish-Russian family. Later, the family relocated to San Diego, where Saul attended San Diego High School before enrolling at the University of Southern California to pursue a bachelor's degree in philosophy, as well as a law degree. After graduating, he worked as an attorney for the city of Oildale, and then for the office of Weinberger and Miller, where he was given the opportunity to represent small business owners. Over time, he discovered a newfound passion there. From business lawyer to business owner. Eventually, Saul became a business owner himself by opening a law firm with a group of lawyers. After his father-in-law passed away, he also started assisting his mother-in-law with her business endeavors. What to do with a property that wasn't generating any income was one of the business issues his mother-in-law was dealing with. Saul persuaded her to exchange the property for a warehouse building and pledged to assist her in finding a tenant. Soon after, Mandel, a client of Saul's, extended an invitation for him to visit one of his retail and wholesale companies in Los Angeles. During his travels, Saul learned about Fedco, a nonprofit organization that ran a network of shops where members could purchase goods for close to wholesale prices. Fedco was one of Mandel's largest wholesale buyers. Turning rejection into opportunity. Within five years, Fedco had grown to 12 locations by loosening its membership requirements and only charging a one-time fee of $2. Due to Fedco's innovative idea and rapid expansion, Saul asked the nonprofit organization if they would be interested in building a second site in his mother-in-law's warehouse as opposed to a traditional store. Fedco, to Saul's astonishment, declined his offer. Fedco made it abundantly obvious that they had no interest in working with them when he inquired a second time. Saul was devastated, since all of the local government department heads had expressed interest. He was certain that it had been a lost opportunity, but he did not lose hope. FedMart launched. After that, Saul decided to take over the warehouse himself and launch a business that mirrored Fedco's concept, and he called it FedMart. One year later, FedMart launched, offering memberships to federal employees and veterans for a one-time fee of $2. When FedMart first opened, it offered mattresses, clothing, luggage, furniture, hardware, houseware, sporting goods, appliances, cigarettes, and liquor. But after just a few months, it expanded its products and services to include packaged foods, in-house brands, and a full-service gas station. By the end of the year, FedMart had brought in $4.5 million, three times more than what Saul and his investors had projected. In the coming years, FedMart became even more successful and seemingly unstoppable, up until one of the world's richest men stepped in and wielded his power against Saul. Expanded to 45 locations. Now the store needed help putting away an unusual load of mattresses and was offering $1.25 per hour to anyone who could help. So Jim, who worked at Navy ships in San Diego's harbor, decided to take the opportunity and headed over immediately. What was supposed to be a one-off gig turned into a new job unloading mattresses and then bagging groceries. Following that, FedMart added 13 sites and offered $2 annual memberships to the general public. Its popularity had such a profound effect on retail that Walmart, Kmart, and Target all opened their doors to the public as bargain retailers. Twelve years later, FedMart had 45 outlets and was earning $300 million annually. Walmart, a formidable rivalry, had 104 outlets and generated $236 million at the same time. The Takeover FitMart's continued success above its competitors caught the attention of German retail mogul Hugo Mann, who proposed a merger with his supermarket chain, Wertkopf. Seoul accepted Hugo's offer in exchange for an over $20 million investment. 
Hugo made an offer to Saul in exchange for a $20 million investment, and Saul accepted. Saul soon realized he had made a critical error. During the first board meeting after the merger, Hugo announced various changes that Saul had never agreed to, and then Hugo fired Saul at their next meeting. By that time, Hugo had acquired further FedMart shares, giving him a majority stake in the business, leaving Saul defenseless. To get his pay and access to his own data, Saul had no choice but to initiate a lawsuit against Hugo. Come back with a new business idea. Fortunately, Jim was given a new job chance as Price Club's executive VP of merchandising, thanks to Saul and his son Robert's swift invention of a fresh business concept. Saul and Robert found out that small business owners in San Diego shared a common issue, needing to deal with many wholesalers to obtain supplies and merchandise, often on unfavorable terms. When Price Club first opened, it offered the same variety of products as FedMart and others that catered to small businesses, such as electronics and office stationery. Three years later, Price Club expanded to two locations and it began to succeed. The Costco Launch At the time, a lawyer named Jeff Brotman and Price Club's executive VP of merchandising, Jim Singal, launched a hypermarket named Costco. It would offer all kinds of brand name electronics, food, books, clothing, houseware, and more. To fund their plans for Costco, Jim and Jeff used their own money and credit. But it wasn't long until banks canceled their car and hindered their plans. Fortunately, not long after, a near-fatal accident led to an unexpected offer. While Jeff was on a flight to Seattle, the plane was struck by lightning and had to make an emergency landing in San Francisco, where Jeff started chatting with a fellow passenger and even shared his plans for Costco. The man was Fred Paulsell, who began to offer Jeff advice, and later, financing. In the present, Costco has expanded to provide other services, such as travel, optical, vehicle services, and a food court with a renowned affordable hot dog combo. In contrast to the things it sells, Costco currently has 55 million members worldwide and makes the majority of its income from membership fees. Members might, in fact, 80% of the time, find better discounts at Costco than on Amazon, according to CNBC. Currently, Costco is one of the largest retailers in the world and is worth an estimated $137 billion. This is the true story of a former business lawyer who became an expert in retail and built one of the largest retailers in the world with the help of his student. What's your opinion about his motivational story? Let us know in the comment box. For more inspiring stories and advice from today's most successful leaders, don't forget to subscribe to our channel.